Hey, welcome to the last lecture on ancient Egypt. We're going to talk about the Amarna period and the temples. All right, the Pharaoh Akhenaten, when he assumed the throne, he decided that he was going to abolish the polytheistic religion that everyone had been following for over 2,000 years and established a monotheistic one where everyone worshipped the Aten or the sun god and naturally he was the sun god on earth. Um, his artwork is got a distinct hallmark and that is the elongated head and profile, the poochy sort of belly that he's got there and almost He's almost sort of feminine sort of qualities to this male figure. There are lots of theories about why he looks this way. We're going to discuss a few. This is his queen, Nefertiti. She's considered, you know, the sculpture is very famous because of her beauty. Uh, they had ch some children together. King Tut will be his son, the one that will assume the throne after his death. Uh, there were th some theories as to why, oh, the, the pharaoh was portrayed the way he was. It was called Marfan syndrome, which is genetic disorder, or Froelich's disease, okay? Um, both of these are sort of connected to the idea that the Egyptian royal family was very inbred. It was not unusual to find sisters marrying brothers and first cousins marrying each other and uncles marrying their nieces or whatever the situation called for, okay? Um, I'm not sure that that's the case. But I think more, I think it was more likely that it was an artistic choice. I think it was sort of the yin and yang idea of blending the male and the female and embodying them into one soul since he's or one body since he is the god that he would have both attributes sort of makes him seem more more powerful okay um when he dies and tut takes the throne everyone the priests the common people, King Tut himself, destroys almost every piece of artwork or temple that had anything to do with his father and his belief system. Very few pieces and examples remain that aren't got scratches through them or haven't been, and they've just been destroyed outright. Because this type of religious belief was a complete shock and an anathema. Um, Something that the regular Egyptians and the priests society just loathed, just hated. They could not accept the idea of one God. And after so many millennia of having th hundreds and hundreds of gods, um, they just couldn't accept that because it really shook their not only their real, but their spiritual life and the belief in the spiritual their spiritual sort of setup, but also the way their society was sort of driven and politically it had a huge devastating effect. So they immediately went back to the polytheistic religion when Tut assumed the throne. Another one of those pieces from the Amarna period. Temples were the last thing we're going to talk about. This is the temple of Hatshepsut, who is one of the few female pharaohs built into the side of the mountain. And this is the temple at Abu Simbel, the temple of Ramses II. He was the pharaoh that was ruling over Egypt, uh, if you, you know, if you're a Christian, during the time of Moses. So it kind of gives you sort of the time period this guy ruled. A very long, uh, he had a very long life and he lived a long time and reigned a long time. And the statues you see here are over 63 feet high. 
1968, when they decided to build the Aswan Dam, this area of Egypt was going to be flooded. So they moved the entire temple, interior and exterior, a ways away so it wouldn't be flooded. Imagine that was an undertaking. Here's the interior of the of the uh, temple at Abu Simbel. It all bespeaks to the glory of Ramses' rule. And we're going to talk about Karnak, and you're going to see some videos probably about this in class. But this was a big temple complex that was built and rebuilt and added on to by 30 different pharaohs. Started in, started in, it's in, it's located in Thebes. It's right on the, on the Nile River around 1550 BCE. And the only part and the largest part that's open to the public is the temple of Amun-Ra or the, you know, the sun god, Ra. Take a look at some pictures. This is what it looks like, partially restored anyway. You see how? The scale of this is huge. And it goes all the way through to the end of the reign of the pharaohs. They keep building and adding to it. The only part that was taken out completely was done by, by, was done by the Egyptians themselves. And that was the temple uh, during uh, Akhenaten's reign, during the Amarna, you know, that, that, the, mon the monotheistic one. They destroyed his temple completely and utterly. Um, there are, excuse me, there's a hypostyle hall in this temple complex. It's very famous. It has 134 very large scale columns, 12 of which are over 70 feet tall. They're huge. And it would have been covered, but it would have had light allowed through the building through the use of Clara's story windows. We're going to talk about Clara's story windows later during the uh, Gothic and the Romanesque in Western Europe. But this is the first time Clara's story and windows were ever used. What they do is basically leave a gap in sort of the ceiling gaps, which allow natural light to come through and filter through and illuminate the entire space inside. Here's some of the high, here's the hypostyle hall. It's got inscriptions of all the different pharaohs, sort of their cartouches, their accomplishments, the, all those kinds of inscriptions. And they would have been painted, colored, and they're also the ones that have the capitals at the top. That, those are papyrus plants that you're looking at. Um, the Karnak's location near the Rock Nile is important, and it was on purpose because it would flood during the annual floods, linking this site magically to the idea of that cyclic nature of life and rebirth, death and rebirth, the cycle of life, the changing of seasons. Um, this was known as the, quote, most select of all places, a uh, close quote. And that's why the Egyptians thought this place itself was magical and had a connection to the gods. Now you can get a better scale of how large these are uh, when you see the people up against them. That that obelisk in the back is the one um, built by ha Queen Hatshepsut herself. It's the largest and tallest obelisk in all of ancient Egypt that was ever built. And here's a model of the hypostyle hall, what it possibly looked like. 